Welcome to Building Foundations for Education. This is the place where you hear all of the good news in education, and we have a lot to share today. With me is our special guest, our superintendent of schools. Welcome, Dr. Rendell. Cynthia, thank you for having me on. We have a happy list of things to celebrate today, and I'm so happy that you can be with us. Yeah, a lot of things uh, going well in our schools, and we want to take a few minutes to share all that with all your viewers. Absolutely. So Teacher of the Year, Employee of the Year celebration just recently took place, and Dr. Uh, Nikki Mosbleck is our Teacher of the Year, and Daisy Rojas, did I say that right? Rios. Rios, excuse me, is our Employee of the Year, so really exciting. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Dr. Mosbleck is an AP Environmental Science teacher at Vero Beach High School. Um, so it's great to have a secondary teacher named as your Teacher of the Year. Um, typically, it's an elementary school teacher, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and um, Dr. Mosbleck is just incredible. She uh, has a passion for her subject matter, environmental science, uh, the world around us and how uh, humans interact with the world around us. And she definitely translates that passion to her students. Um, her classes are sought after. You know, kids are signing up for her classes. They really enjoy her classes. Um, she has a great uh, a, a pass rate on the AP test, the AP Environmental Science test. Um, she really just does a lot to ignite that uh, love of learning about her subject matter with her students. She's very popular. Um, she's a fantastic teacher. Well, and her, she has such a wonderful background. She was just on our show um, earlier and just so amazing that she began as a Fulbright scholar teaching English in Korea was with Vero Beach High School, then went to get her PhD from FIT. And then I love her passion for her students becoming global citizens and the story about them collecting styrofoam lunch trays for one week and how they basically covered a tree out front to make that statement. And that led to change of cardboard lunch trays. That's really wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, each generation, um, we get a little bit more responsible about mm -hmm. taking care of our environment and the world we live in, trying to take care of Mother Earth. and. Um, she's definitely leading that charge here, and her students are definitely responding to that. She's, she's fantastic. That's awesome. So we are wishing her well, and we know that she'll advance to the state competition. Right. So all 67 school districts in Florida have nominated their Teacher of the Year, and so now it's on to a state competition. And there will be a finalist, a group of finalists, five or six state finalists. And we've had finalists in the past and yes. state winners in the past. And so, uh, you know, we think that Dr. Mosbleck stands a good chance of being in that, at least in that final group. That's, that's awesome. So we'll all be cheering for her. I know I'll be personally campaigning with my other counties across the state. It'll be exciting to hear about what happens next. Well, it's great that we, you know, we celebrate teachers all across the state. Yeah. It'll be great to see uh, Indian River County Teacher of the Year up there in the final group. Absolutely. And then Employee of the Year with Daisy. Yeah, Daisy Rios at Felsmere Elementary. Um, she mans the front desk there. Um, she's uh, invested in that community. Mm -hmm. She grew up in that community, went to Felsmere Elementary School. Um, so she's definitely a great representative of not just Felsmere, but also the school district, our community as well. Absolutely. And um, has, like, as you said, has quite a history with Indian River County. And so that's wonderful to have her there. What a, what a wonderful gift to the school. Well, that's the thing. You know, a lot of times um, you have that connection to the community. She's, mm -hmm. she's a community member, um, yeah. you know, was a community member earlier as a child. And so... Um, that front office, that's a, that's a pivotal position, you know, when, when people come in, when parents come in, they have questions or people moving to the area, they yeah. come in, they want to register their child, because we do register at our individual schools now. Right. Um, it's great to have someone that has that familiarity and background, invested in the community there, knows everybody in the community, can, can put people in touch with resources in the community. So, yeah, she's invaluable and a great choice um, for District Employee of the Year. Well, and as you said, that's really, you know, I always think of customer service and education, but that is so important when people enter our schools that there's good customer service, and she's certainly a model for that. For yeah, our definitely. Uh, you know, you walk into that front office at Felsmere, it's a warm place. Um, very, you're greeted, you know, uh, with enthusiasm and, and, and a smile from Daisy and everybody else there. But I think, again, that her connection to the community you know, she's able to, you know, provide resources to people when they have questions or answers when they have questions. Yeah. So lots to celebrate and an even bigger story, which is our 92% graduation rate, highest on the Treasure Coast. And right. I feel like we cannot promote that enough. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, the four-year cohort graduation rate is the, is the official title. Um, the State Department of Education um, releases that in December for the mm -hmm. prior year. So just before winter break, we got the results for last year's graduating class. And we hit 92%. That's the highest we've ever been. That's a five-point increase from our previous year of 87%. 
Just four years ago, we were at 80%, so 81%. So we've gone all the way to 92% in, in just four, four years. years. Right, as a district. And, uh, you know, that's pretty impressive. I think, uh, you know, it's a testament to the K-12 system overall. Yes. Um, it, it's measured on a student success in four years. So if they enter a ninth grade, they have to graduate in four years on time, meet all the state graduation requirements um, for them to be counted as a graduate. But really, it's not just a measure of the high schools because if the student doesn't get to ninth grade mm -hmm. with the skills and knowledge they need to be successful, then they're probably not, you know, gonna, or they're gonna face even a tougher time getting through in four years meeting all those requirements. So even though we kind of assign these graduation rates to the high schools, they're really a reflection of, of, of the whole district. And, but all three of our high schools were above 90% for the first time ever. Um, Sebastian River High School is at 91, Vero Beach High School at 93, and Indian River Charter High at 96. That's awesome. So just um, a huge uh, reason to celebrate you know, the district overall, because obviously these kids are getting into ninth grade with the skills and knowledge they need. And then some of them that run into hurdles while they're in high school, we have staff now that are dedicated to working with those individual students to make sure they reach the, the finish, cross the finish line, meet those graduation requirements. I mean, most of us think about graduating from high school, you just have to pass your classes, right. and then you graduate. Well, it's a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. In Florida, there's a certain number of classes you have to you know, pass in, you know, in order to graduate. So four years of English, three years of math, three years of science, some social studies requirements, some electives, government, economics. But you also have to have a C average. You have to have a 2.0. Yeah. You also have to pass two state tests, and they're pretty tough. There's a 10th grade reading test, and Algebra 1 has an end of course exam. It's a state exam, and it's very difficult. And so we have some students who do very well in the classroom and maybe don't do so well on those standardized tests. But we have alternatives for them. They can take the ACT or the SAT, college placement tests. If they score higher on those than they do, so to speak, on the state test, that meets their graduation requirements. So, you know, or if a student is in danger of not graduating because they don't have a 2.0 going into their senior year, we have a dedicated staff that work with those students to make sure that they're monitoring their grades, monitoring their attendance, right. encouraging them to succeed. It's obviously paid off. Um, you know, again, 92% is the highest we've ever been. Um, we'll keep striving for 100% though. Well, and as you said, there are so many people involved. It is certainly, we want to give kudos to the high schools, but it's really the whole process from pre-K, you know, investing in early education through things like step into kindergarten. It's those collaborations in the community with the Moonshot Community Action Network. It's all those nonprofits that provide after school mentoring and tutoring. You know, the list goes on parents, even our local, you know, churches supporting children. There's so many folks that have a role in that in supporting students. Yeah, absolutely. The, the phrase that we've, we've heard often is schools can't do it alone. Right. And so a lot of the uh, wraparound services or the support that we get from the community has helped, you know, helped us reach that 92% graduation rate. Um, you mentioned, you know, after school programs, yeah. different youth achievement center, right. Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Daisy Hope, a crossover mission, you know, all kinds of different agencies in our community that are helping mm -hmm. our kids, you know, after school to improve their academics. We've got a strong partnership with the Learning Alliance focusing on Third grade literacy will also Moonshot Academy after school. Mm -hmm. um, summer programs such as Literacy on the Lagoon and Literacy in Motion with the ELC and, and the Vero Beach Museum of Art. So yes. all kinds of other players, not just the school folk, right. that should celebrate in that, in that in increased graduation rate. Absolutely, so congratulations to everyone involved. Congratulations to our community. And we, we wanna keep striving for that number to go higher so that every student, 100% would be it's quite a lofty goal, but I think we're that's all- the should, That's think, the goal. That's the goal. And, and <laughs> to jump from 87 to 92 last year was, was quite an achievement, yeah. So congratulations again. So more exciting news, there were um, 18 schools that received five-star awards from the Department of Education. Yeah, the Florida Department of Education has a five-star school award that, that uh, schools can earn. They have to apply and they have to demonstrate that they've met all the requirements and everything. And 18, 18 of our schools have achieved the five-star school award. And, it measures a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but the centerpiece of it really is uh, community involvement. Yes. Um, they want to see records or, or evidence that the community is involved in partnering with the school. So we have a lot of schools that have strong partnerships with local agencies like Indian River Academy. There's a retirement community down there, Indian River Club, mm -hmm. and, and they volunteer hour after hour after hour each week in that school. And so we have that relationship with a lot of other agencies in our community. And so. One of the things that the Five Star School Award, you have to document a certain number of volunteer hours um, per the number of students you have. 
But also one of the things that's unique about the Five Star School Award is you have to demonstrate that your school is giving back to the community. So not just uh, do you have volunteers coming in and assisting with the school, but what are you doing to teach kids to give back to the community? How involved are they in their community? So we have a couple initiatives that uh, demonstrate that and, and, and we're one of the, some of the reasons these schools got the Five Star School Award. Casual for a Cause, you know, each month we, we raise money for local organizations, that was part of it. But also we have some of our secondary schools, our high schools and middle schools, they send their students down to the elementary schools to serve as mentors and reading buddies and things like that. So um, the Five Star School Award is, is a celebration of a school's link to the community. Right. And so to have 18 of our schools, we've never had more than two um, earn that award in the past. So, and this again is for last year. You know, the state gives these awards out kind of in the middle of the year. But um, yeah, so 18 of our schools achieved it last year. So obviously we want to try and get all 27 this year. Yeah, well that, I think what's so powerful as you said is that it teaches students to give back, that they are an important part of our community and play an important role. Well, if you think about it, there's a lot of student groups, um, different clubs mm -hmm. at the different schools that participate in things like Relay for Life. Um, they'll do beach cleanups. Yep. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things that our students are doing to give back to the community, but you know, somebody has to set that up for them and lead that. And Absolutely. so kudos to the school personnel and, and the community agencies that are working together to make that happen. Absolutely. So we are always looking for new, amazing teachers and staff, and there's a job fair coming up in February. It's February 13th from 9 to 2 p.m. at the J.A. Thompson Administration Center. Tell our viewers who, who, should, who should come. Well, we're always looking for the best people to work in our schools and in our, in our different departments. And so, yeah, job fair, February 13th, mm -hmm. there at the uh, school board headquarters, right in uh, the heart of our community, right by Storm Grove Middle School. And uh, all day, you can come in and, and apply and interview for different positions, not just teaching positions. We need bus drivers. We need um, custodial and maintenance staff. Mm -hmm. We need front office staff in different positions. And so, you know, this is an opportunity for people who are maybe new to our community or maybe um, want a career change, you know, to come and check us out. Um, you can get on our website. Um, you can register ahead of time and look at what different positions would be available. But, yeah, so, you know, um, rather than just rely on the one ads or, or the Internet, we were hosting a job fair. And we really hope that anybody that's interested in working in the school district to come and check us out and, and be a part of the job fair. And I think it's a great opportunity for people who have had very successful careers doing other things, especially at the high school level. We've been very fortunate to gain um, new teachers in our career academies, so it's wonderful that they bring that background. Um, I think we had a teacher years ago who had the background of working in an automotive industry and then led the automotive academy, so lots of opportunities that people may not always think of. Right, that's the thing. We have a lot of second career teachers, mm -hmm. and they're very, very effective in the classroom because they have all the knowledge of the practical application of the subject matter, yes. so to speak. And we just talked about Dr. Mosbleck, who kind of was a scientist and now is teaching environmental science. and you know, with the um, applied, you know, technology, all the different uh, vocational trades out there that we have with the Treasure Coast Technical College and yes. um, the vocational programs at the comprehensive high schools, there are all kinds of opportunities for second career teachers or someone who maybe has worked in business or finance and has an aptitude for math. Mm -hmm. A lot of them come in and become math teachers. Um, you, so if you're thinking at all about a career in, in education, we encourage you to check us out on February 13th. Awesome. And so a new tradition has begun, I think very recently, of honoring a veteran of the month. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, and we're not original in this. We did see it at another school district that they were honoring a veteran every month as their veteran of the month. So mm -hmm. we started that a few months ago. And uh, Command Sergeant Major Ed Britt is uh, our veteran of the month this month. And he's a Green Beret, a Vietnam veteran. Uh, he's very active at the store in the mall, at the mm -hmm. veteran store in the mall. and. Um, it was great to honor him at our recent board meeting, but yeah, that's a great feature that Kristen Max, our PIO, Public Information Officer, brought to us, and just a great way to honor those who have served. Well, and our Veterans Council is so active in our community, and especially with our schools as well, providing education and knowledge. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have a strong partnership with the uh, Veterans Council of Indian River County. Um, they have several programs where they come into our classrooms. The Veterans in the Classrooms is the name of one of the programs. Yeah. They come in and they teach the students about um, well, actually teach them about patriotism and what it means to be an American. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, they break it down and talk to them about the different parts of the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, they teach them about the flag, the history of the flag. They actually teach them how to fold the flag and care for it. Oh, wow. Um, all kinds of great stuff that they do when they come visit. That's awesome. So we also have a new website, I understand, something for folks to look for, and there's a video that they'll be seeing in the 
um, connection that comes out on every Friday? Yeah, so every Friday, um, again, our public information officer, Kristen Max, publishes a connection newsletter. It's an electronic newsletter. It has a lot of information about the stuff going on in our schools. And so in there this, this week, this edition is going to be a link to a quick video clip, a preview of our new website. Um, we're constantly trying to upgrade our electronic communications. We have a Twitter page, we have a Facebook page, and our website is pretty good, but this new version is much, much, much better. More uh, interactive, and it will actually have an app that will be available soon on iTunes and the App Store, um, so people can actually check out all the good stuff that's going on in our schools on their phone. They can even do things like check the lunch menu, um, parents can check their, school's, their uh, son or daughter's grades on their phone um, by accessing the app. They can see calendar of events, all the different stuff that's going on in our school. So yeah. new website to be launched uh, the last week of January and then app soon to follow. Yeah, it, it was exciting. About a year ago, I was invited to kind of be on a committee and it was interesting to see what other districts were doing and those best practices. And so I'm excited because I think that app was a great feature. Um, I mean, of course, you could log in on your phone through the Internet but I think that's just gonna be so much slicker and faster um, for parents and for families. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not a, a tech guru or anything, mm -hmm. but I know that there's different, different ways different electronic platforms operate on your phone. Like when yeah. you go to a, a website, a store website or a company's website, if it's not designed to be accessed on your phone, if it's not a mobile platform, um, the information appears differently. It's harder to get to different things. Right. So the fact that we'll have a new, new and improved website and then an app that's designed specifically to be used on your mobile phone, on your smartphone. It's going to be a great way for people to access information. That's wonderful. So we'll look for that. That's great. Yeah, and we'll be able to push out things on the app. You know, most, most apps that people have on their phones, they get notifications. Yes. So if there's any reason for us to communicate with parents or the community and they have the app, they'll be able to get a no notification on the app. Hopefully if uh, there's good news to share, but obviously if there's a dangerous situation or an emergency situation, we want to alert everybody to we could use the app for that. Absolutely. So um, one of the things I think that is important is we have a strategic plan as a school district and I know the Education Foundation really tries to collaborate to align our goals and to do everything we can to support those and there is a new committee being formed about positive, um, positive climate and discipline, is that right? So every year we, um, we review the Positive Climate Code of Student Conduct Handbook mm -hmm. um, so, and the dress code is in there uh, among other things. And, so each year we ask for a committee to be formed to kind of review this. Right. Um, so they review the discipline policies, um, rules and regulations at the schools for student behavior, but the dress code's also on there. And so that committee is starting to meet. Um, it actually met uh, yesterday, and so, but it will meet periodically over the next few months. So if anybody's interested in being a part of the committee that shapes those policies, if you want to have an impact on um, discipline policies at the school level mm -hmm. or um, the dress code or anything like that, um, please get on our website and look for the information on the Positive Climate Code of Student Conduct Committee. And um, you can join that committee. It meets in the evenings, usually about 5 o'clock, so that working parents and, and other individuals can come. Yeah. And we really do want um, community input. You know, we want to have, let uh, community members, students, teachers, parents, everybody have a say in, um, you know, in crafting you know, that handbook every year. And if there's policies that need to be revisited and changed, we want input on that. And I think it's important to notice that document has really been held up as a model in our state, I understand, as a, just a really best practice and a, and a good thing. We're always looking to improve it, of course, and that's why the committee is important. But yeah, our process of having the committee meet yes. every year to review the, the policies and procedures is what's kind of held up to other districts as mm -hmm. this is how you do it. You need to involve the community. Um, I've been in other districts, worked in two other districts in Florida, and we don't have the same kind of, well, we didn't have the same kind of community involvement in those districts. We didn't ask for the same type of community involvement in those right. districts, so I'm glad that we are asking. Absolutely. So as we, we've covered a lot of information, and by time this airs, the Indian River Regional Science and Engineering Fair will be behind us. So I know that we will have seen you there, and I just wondered if you would share a little bit with viewers about what's powerful, I think, about our relationship with the school district in presenting this community-wide event. Well, we absolutely thank the Education Foundation for their sponsorship and really operation of the Science Fair. It's a true partnership in, uh, in how the Science Fair is, is conducted, and, and uh, we, we thank you guys for that. Um, science Fair is just incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times as a parent, we think the Science Fair is a headache or whatever, but if you go to the Science Fair 
and you talk to the kids and you hear their passion for you know what they've been studying yeah. uh, that makes it all worthwhile i think that um especially the little ones mm -hmm. you know we have science fair projects as early as kindergarten and so to hear the little people talk about what they've learned as they've completed their science fair project it's it's pretty rewarding it's pretty refreshing it's pretty exciting and then the older kids the middle schoolers and the high schoolers especially right. now you start to see that they have found something that they're very interested in they're willing to put time energy and effort into and it might be their career Absolutely. And, and as you know um, being involved in the science fair as long as you have a lot of times that leads to scholarships yes. um, to college and then entry into into careers in the science and engineering field and so the science fair itself is kind of the key or the door that opens for these careers for these interests I think it's also um, a great example of applied learning, you know, students being able to solve a problem, to be a global citizen. And it is exciting to see, it, this will be my 15th fair, to see students come back and judge. That to me is, like you said, that, that power of giving back is just wonderful. And to see where it takes them. And as you know, we're one of the few counties that has a kindergarten through fifth grade fair. And so often when I reach out to these students later, they may not have become a scientist, they may have become um, a realtor, they may be a business leader, they may be an EMT, a, a variety of things. I'll say, when did you develop your love for science? And it always goes back to that elementary experience. Well, I think, um, like you said, the application, the hands-on learning, they kind of get to choose, right. you know, what they're going to work on. So it's something they're interested in. Um, you know, the, I don't know, the alkaline battery test and the, yeah. the acidity of different types of juices, whatever it is, it interests them. Yes. It's not necessarily a teacher-directed activity. So Student choice, that's a, that's a big motivator. They mm -hmm. get to choose what they're studying or working on. So, yeah, I, I just love going and listening to them you know, present their projects yeah. because they're usually pretty excited about what they've learned. Absolutely, and we want to give a shout out certainly to our sponsors and the college's FIT that will be offering $1.7 million in college scholarships, Embry-Riddle, Indian River State College, um, the Link Foundation, and, you know, then we'll have 150 judges who come out every year and it's so exciting they'll tell me even at the elementary level they're like I learn something every single year so it's great for them that exchange of learning between adults and children well I think that you know if you if you have the time and you have the aptitude volunteering to be a science fair judge is, is very rewarding yes. and I think uh, we're very fortunate to have a lot of people in our community that do and then yeah definitely thank you to those different organizations sponsoring offering scholarships of course, they're looking for future scientists, yes. so it, they have an interest in doing it. They do. But obviously, they, wouldn't ha they don't have to do it, so we do appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, we've covered a lot from Teacher of the Year to a 92% graduation rate, 5% gain. We want to mention in four years, that's amazing. 18 schools that got the five-star award, a job fair on February 13th, um, Veterans Day. Oh, and last but not least, we have Literacy Week as we wrap up, and that is, is this is airing is happening right right now at the second yeah january 28th through uh february, february 1st. 1st is uh celebrate literacy week across the state of florida florida department of education designates that week as celebrate literacy week and celebrate literacy all the time but um, we have activities in all of our schools um, to celebrate the love of literacy the importance of, of reading uh, if you have the time and, and want to volunteer to go read at a school you can come anytime, but Celebrate Literacy Week, there's definitely lots of activities going on. Not just having guest readers in, there's poetry competitions at some of the secondary and high schools. There's all kinds of different activities um, highlighting literacy at every one of our schools this week. That's wonderful. So lots to celebrate, lots of good news, and thank you for being with me today. Yeah, it's the middle of the year, but we got a lot going on. We do. So thanks for tuning in. We've covered a lot of good news in education. You can read more good news on The Connection, which you can access off the school district website. It comes out every Friday. It's chock full of great news in education, and we hope you'll check it out and sign up to receive it. Thanks for being with us. We hope you'll tune in again soon.